What's up, YouTube? Christo here, and I am back for the Fragcast episode two. Uh, today's topic, we're going to be talking about compliments, and my co-host slash guest is my man, Eugene. Uh, tell us a bit about yourself there, Eugene. Hey, everybody. Big shout out to YouTube. Um, my name is Eugene. Got a small YouTube channel, a You Smells Good. Be sure to check it out small gathering but it's quite cozy so just really talking about fragrances perfumes really not i don't really go into colognes or um designer fragrances more um more about the art of perfumery yeah sure and you know that's kind of what's you know drawn us together you know i definitely say you're one of my you know, partners in crime in the, in the perfume world, you know, we have pretty similar tastes, pretty similar views, pretty similar opinions. And, you know, we've done a lot of collaborations recently. So I'm actually really excited to have you on for uh, the second podcast, you know, for the compliments. Uh, Cause this is something we've talked about quite a lot. Um, so to you, what would your definition of a compliment be, you know, in terms of your fragrance? Oh man, a compliment can be just, you know, somebody noticing um, your smell, but you know, you smell good or, uh, or, you know, if it's somebody you work with or somebody you, you know really well and they know you're into fragrances, it, it, it can be a little bit different um, mm -hmm. compliment because maybe they're just trying to appease you. But I think a real compliment is something that comes from a stranger, somebody you've never met before. Um, mm -hmm. That's what I would consider a, a real true compliment. Yeah, I agree. Like totally in the terms of, you know, in the fragrance world, having someone you don't know or have never met or know very little about them or you know just a random stranger on the street or in the mall and them stopping and saying you know wow you smell really good yeah to me that is the absolute definition of a compliment and those are to me the ones that the that matter the most uh, yeah and they're real special only because i find they don't happen all too often mm -hmm. um it takes a little bit of courage to come up to a complete stranger to tell them you smell good or, mm -hmm. you know, what are you wearing? I've never smelt something like that before. So. Yeah, I agree. I completely and utterly agree. So I want to talk a little bit about, you know, our personal compliments, you know, times where perhaps we've been a bit struck by someone just coming up and going, wow, you smell amazing. Do you have any that really stand out to you? I do. And I, I don't have all that many. It's only happened to me twice that I can remember of. Um, okay. And oddly enough, the very first one is a fragrance that I myself cannot stand. <laughs> I actually really despise it. But when Paco Rabanne's One Million first came out, I was at the drugstore and I, I just sprayed some on to see what it was all about. And immediately after, I went to the grocery store to do some shopping. And when I got to the checkout, the girl was absolutely floored. She was like, what are you wearing? You smell delicious. She would not stop rambling about one million. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even though I got this wonderful compliment, um, the fragrance didn't suit me. And it's not something that I would wear for somebody else or because sure. I think it would garner a compliment. Mm -hmm. Um, the second compliment I ever got was with Dior's home. I was in the gas station just paying for my gas and this elderly woman just kind of like stuck her head over my shoulder and she's like, you smell amazing. What are you wearing? <laughs> so, yeah. And that was, you know, that was a really nice compliment. I, I guess I appreciated that one more because I do like Dior home. Mm -hmm. so, I told her what I was wearing and she's like, I really got to get that for my husband. Okay. And she said he's actually wearing Dior's newest perfume or cologne, which yeah. she couldn't really stand, which was Dior Sauvage, oddly enough. Oh, that recently. Okay. Right, right. Yeah. It just happened a few months ago. Oh, wow. Okay. 
And uh, those were um, two compliments that I got just from complete strangers. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I've gotten compliments on some other things. Mm -hmm. Um, Actually, one of the most complimented fragrances I get is from Creed's Aventus and Royal Oud, which, again, oddly enough, I don't wear all that often. Okay. Now, is that from, like, more family, friends, coworkers? It's, it's, yeah, for, from coworkers. Um, okay. Royal Oud actually got the biggest, um, you know, that the, the biggest, wow, what the fuck are you wearing? You smell amazing. Yeah. It was, like, 10 hours after I applied it, and I couldn't even smell it myself. And I said, are you sure it's me? Because I don't smell anything. And the guy was like, yeah, it's absolutely you. I just walked past, and it's, like, mind-blowing, so... Uh, yeah, I love Royal Oud. I like absolutely. I think it is by far like the best thing from Creed. Like without even second guessing. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, because we've talked a bit about your work. Like you know, you live with a lot. Of, uh, sorry, you work with a lot of guys. You know, maybe that aren't necessarily into fragrances, perhaps, but they will just come up to you and be like, wow, you smell really good. Or, you know, they're like, wow, you smell like cat piss or, you know, just something. Really- yeah. It's quite interesting. I work with all guys and um, mm. they're always coming around and they know I'm into fragrances. They know I have um, fragrances on my desk or my locker and they're like, Hey, do you have anything I can try today or mm-hmm. you know, anything interesting? It, nobody really says, Hey, this smells like shit or piss or, you know, whatever I'm wearing. I, I guess they can't really pick out sure. no, like we can. They just kind of more recognize that you're wearing something and it's either like right. and it's, it's either good or just whatever. The harshest thing they'll say is that smells really masculine. Okay. I, I, yeah, they struggle for words to okay. describe a scent. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, now for me, I've I've told a couple to you. Uh, I've told a couple of these stories to you. Um, my first real open, you know, just direct face to face compliment was probably about eight months ago. So probably about July two thousand fifteen, and I was at Winners, which is like uh, you know uh, in Canada, basically you know Marshalls or TJ Maxx. So it's kind of like a discounter, you know, designer discounter. Right. And uh, uh, I was in there and I was buying something and I was wearing uh, Bergamot 22 from Labo, something that both you and I have <laughs> talked about quite a lot, you know, publicly and privately, you know, just, you know, right. I, I like it a bit more than you, but I still definitely have my problems with it. As I do. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know you're very vocal about your, your problems with Bergamot 22. Well, that's one great thing that talking to you, we get really candid and honest. And um, mm-hmm. we don't need to pretend. You know, if there's something that we don't like, we can easily say, hey, Chris, I really don't like this. Or, yeah. you know, Eugene, I don't like that. Yeah. But, yeah, I agree. Bergamot 22, it is a nice fragrance, but it's not for me. And Yeah. Um, I was wearing it, yeah, and I got to the checkout, and uh, the woman working, you know, the, the cash register, very attractive, like, you know, East Indian woman. She's like, wow, you smell so good. What is that? And, you know, that's one of my big problems with uh, Bergamot 22 is it just doesn't last on me, but... I actually had to think for a couple seconds what I was wearing. <laughs> I just couldn't smell it on myself. So, and I kind of thought, and I was like, what is it? And I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, oh, it's from, uh, you know, a French brand called Le Labo. That's all I told her because, you know, like, how hard is it to describe? Like, oh, well, this is a fragrance house that's niche. It's called Bergamot 22 from Le Labo. Right. You know what I mean? It's just like, you start sounding all pretentious and everything. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, all they want to hear is just like Calvin Klein or Tommy Hill. Right. That's it. They don't care. They just like, wow, it smells good. Right, right. But that was like my first real unsolicited compliment. In- and it was quite a, quite a nice surprise considering yeah. you can smell it yourself. Exactly. Because it wasn't like I had just put it on and went into the shop. 
you know, and was walking around, it was like five or six hours before and I had completely forgotten it was on. Right. Um, another one that really stands out, uh, I went into the bank maybe in October, just like, you know, maybe four months ago or so. And, uh, I was speaking with the, uh, uh, you know, the teller talking about updating my account information cause I had just moved and she just kind of paused for a minute and she's like, you smell amazing. What are you wearing? <laughs> and that one I do remember because I had sprayed it on just like maybe 20 minutes before that. Um, I was wearing Frederick Mall's uh, Bois d'Orage or French Lover. Right. Like, that is amazing. And I was like, oh, well, you know, it's some like, you know, obscure French brand. She's like, wow, it smells so good. And we kind of talk for a couple seconds, maybe a minute or whatever. And she's like, what is it? What's it called? What is it? That smells so good. I was like, oh, it's uh, from a brand called Frederick Mall. Like you can only get it in Toronto. It's pretty exclusive stuff. And we kind of talk for a couple minutes and she's like, wow, that is so good. What's the actual name of the fragrance? And I actually kind of told her a little bit about it and we talked for a minute and she's like, oh yeah, me and my, I don't know, my husband, my boyfriend, my partner, whatever, you know, she's like, we're kind of into fragrances and stuff, but she's like, I really like that a lot. And that one really stood out to me as well. Cause it was kind of like her in her professional environment, you know, as a bank teller, right. Just like completely going nuts over this fragrance. Well, that sounded like a pretty enthusiastic um, compliment. Yeah. And you could have easily just as well told her it was something from Dolce Gabbana and she'd never know the difference instead of sitting there trying to explain yeah. who Frederick Mall is. But exactly. Just going back to Bergamot 22, I remember somebody, a coworker asking me, I was wearing it once to work and a coworker asked me, what are you wearing? It doesn't smell like um, what you usually wear. It, you actually smell like a fart, <laughs> <laughs> what? which I found quite like amusing because it smells nothing like a fart, right? Yeah, I wouldn't ever it's all think of citra, that. all citrus and vanilla and musk. Wow. Yeah, and, and what would you call that? Like the anti compliment or Yeah, I don't know, because it's like, okay, maybe some people like the smell of farts. I don't yeah. know. But yeah, kind of like an anti compliment or Yeah. You know, and like, I actually got another anti compliment on uh Songe d'un bois de thé. Which, okay. I, you know, I can see somebody not liking that because really it smells like a, a dirty vagina and uh, unwashed armpits, right? Okay. <laughs> and somebody said, man, what the hell are you wearing? That It's like, just doesn't work. So. That's okay. cool. I'm, I know you're a much bigger fan of Songe than I am. Um, I definitely don't hate it. I just perhaps think it's, I don't know. There is something about it that is just like really full on like the supreme sweetness of it that goes into like the super dry, arid, you know, very barnyardy oud is just really, really fascinating to me. I don't know. I don't think it's something I can really pull off myself. But oh, I'm just madly in love with it. Like every time I wear it, I just... I just want to wear it more and more and I, I find it a little bit challenging and those are the fragrances that I love the most, the ones that have me thinking. So, yeah, you know, Songe, when I smell it, I don't really, it's not something that I can sit there and pick out all the notes. It's just yeah. something that I can appreciate like as one big smell and, yeah. um, you know, it does have a lot of those sexual, um, undertones to it. Um, but like dirty sex, not very, like, yeah, you know, absolutely. Like soft um, core, you know, you, you know, unwashed and body parts and yeah, it's like really filthy, dirty. Yeah. Let's call it a mature fragrance. Oh yeah. And I find <laughs> it very polarizing as well in the sense that, you know, it is so sweet in the opening, but ends up getting so like, you know, like barnyardy and almost fecal in the dry down it's very interesting yeah and it gets compared to leather oud a lot um interestingly enough which yeah. is also very barnyardy but, um, i am um, i can see just similarities in like the kind of mild sweetness and the barnyardiness but in terms of overall smell yeah i find them very 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 different oh absolutely but i mean they are very both very woody smoky a little bit of oud, you know, I don't get, 
an abundance of oud in either of them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, some leather, right? They both carry leather. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So what do you think about, not necessarily just for us, but generally, what do you find are the notes that are the most appealing um, that people generally just like to smell when they're walking down the street, walking through the supermarket, walking through the mall? What are things that people like to smell? It's so interesting you ask me that because it's everything that I don't look for in a fragrance. And they're usually um, freshies, you know, citruses, um, vanillas, Mm -hmm. fruitiness, Mm -hmm. sweetness, Mm -hmm. just an abundance of sweetness. I actually went into our local drugstore here. I'm just in this small town of 15,000 people. So we don't have many perfume shops except for the one drugstore. And I was looking for about a minute when the lady said, can I show you Sauvage? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And I was like, well, I was looking for something a little bit um, heavier. Yeah. So she tried to present me Eros. Ooh. Yeah. And after that, it was Mr. Burberry. So I guess <laughs> these, these are their biggest sellers right now. And these probably. are probably the biggest compliment getters. Sauvage, Mr. Burberry, Eros, yeah. H-Men, Lanui. You know, all things that I don't really find enjoyable for me. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're they great, have a similar- great colognes for um, younger, younger men. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Yeah, I I think that's what people find appealing today. Well, there's the similarity of the citrus, you know, uh, Sauvage, Mr. Burberry, they both have the, uh, you know, the freshness to them. Uh, Eros is very sweet. And yeah, to me, I would totally say that those are uh, the absolute definition of what is like, you know, kind of both genders you know like male and female but i think you know for female it's also the kind of the fruity floral yeah patchoulis and yeah absolutely yeah, fruity floral in a fruity floral will be or you know patchouli in a you know woman's mainstream designer will be a bit more toned down i love patchouli but um to me it's just like the fruity floral it's just like the bane of my perfume existence i just <laughs> I hate the stuff. Um, I just, I can't stand it. It's boring. It's just simple. It's a throwaway no brainer. Yeah, it just doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. It's just so one dimensional. It's like, okay, peach and rose. Like, Oh, how overdone is that? You know, just like, well, that's where we stand at with a lot of today's designers is mm-hmm. one dimensional. Um, fragrances that don't really set up for a beautiful dry down or just something, yeah. you know, a little bit more, a little bit heavier, something with a spine. Mm-hmm. But, um, definitely I have to say, we were actually just talking about this the other day. Um, you mentioned you were wearing angel from Tier Mugler. I was wearing. So while I was in that drug store, I was like the only three fragrances I find that, would suit me in here that I don't already have is original Polo, mm-hmm. Christian Dior's Dune, yep. and Angel Essence Absolute. I can't say I'm overly familiar with the Essence Absolute, but I love Polo Green um, or Polo, original Polo, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I love Dune. I think those are both fantastic. And to me, it's like, I don't know, I live in Hamilton, which is like more, it's a fairly big city, but it doesn't really have bigger ticket items when you go to department stores. Right. So like, there's no way I would ever find anything from Dior, uh, in the, you know, department store or a drug store here. But, um, yeah, I would love to walk in and smell those. Um, and it's not that I'm just into um, masculine, old school fragrances. I actually do prefer a lot of women's scents, but oddly enough, those from those three fragrances, there's no way Polo or Dune would garner you a compliment. 
not I can like yeah. compliments because it's sweet. It's got vanilla. It's mm-hmm. got um, a little bit of florals and, and ambers, but yeah, um, Polo's really outdated. Yeah, I like it. I think it's great. <laughs> yeah, and Epic Man is something that was um, inspired from polo yeah i remember you mentioning that to me before and it kind of took me by surprise because i love epic man i think epic man is one of the the best kind of mainstream niche fragrances in like the last decade i think it is phenomenal as do i and when you said that i was like wow that just kind of like changes everything i never even thought of that even the bottle is green you know there are so many similarities yeah it's it's, dumbfounding it's yeah i never even thought about it like you know the bottle the color the shape the cap all of that they're like the caps are the same color yeah yeah exactly really interesting but both are are just stunning um fantastic masculine fragrances yeah yeah um but yeah definitely you know citruses lemon bergamot uh sweet notes you know vanilla tonka tonka is just like oh my most <laughs> despised note in perfumery is tonka I'm, I'm up there uh along with herbal notes like uh lavender and basil i just i can't stand tonka um, but you know like you mentioned um citruses lemon neroli you know they don't have to be boring look at Guerlain's habit rouge is made from fresh citruses, mm-hmm. but it has some depth and it has some complexity. So if that's what you're into, there are options. You don't need to settle for um, a spineless Sauvage or, yeah. you know, uh, Mr. Burberry or a Bleu de Chanel. There yeah, are other I, things I out there. Yeah. Um, like I think, uh, for example, uh, Comme de Garçon, their collaboration, I'm actually going to talk about this in a video I do soon. Uh, uh, Hussein Shalayan's uh, Airborne is just like an amazing fragrance, like amazing citrus fragrance. It literally smells like wood and bark and citrus just like blended up and made into like, you know, a smoothie or like a perfume. It's just so good. There's there there's definitely citruses out there I like, but... Mm for the most even a lot of the niche stuff like i remember going in with you to uh one of the niche boutiques in uh toronto and just trying like uh i I know what you're going to say neo like (laughs) this is nothing this is just nothing this is four hundred dollar bottle of nothing it's It's just so boring and uh what was the other one sal marin oh yes water um yeah, we just tried that more recently. Yeah, yeah. It's like, wow, somebody just filled a 100 mil bottle with salt water. And, and just charging 200 bucks for it. Yeah, like it was definitely not bad. Like I would actually say I prefer Salmaran because it was intentionally, uh, you know, Healy is very minimal, very uh, transparent and stuff. Whereas Neo, I was hearing people call it like the greatest citrus fragrance ever made in human history kind of. <laughs> and, you know, and as for someone like myself who likes citrus, but is really, you know, discerning about it, I, I try and it's like, wow, this is so boring. There's just nothing interesting. But um, yeah, I would say I would take Salmaran over Neo, even though they're completely different, you know, completely, completely different. Yeah. Um, um, definitely. I would there's, take- there's definitely not too many citruses that I'm like madly in love with. Yeah. So, I mean, if I were to find one, I, I'd be over the moon. Mm-hmm. Something that I can wear all summer long. But unfortunately, there's just not that many that um, can hold my attention. I'm a very big fan of the different companies' bergamot. I like that. I think that's just really beautiful, clean fresh sour green citrus with some like really clean white florals underneath it Mm -hmm. i think that's fantastic stuff but um kind of like you know they they smell quite different but uh like bergamot 22 i just you know i have to keep spraying it every two or three hours 
Well, the thing with citruses is it's, it's, it's a note usually found in the top notes and it's not something that lasts very long. So to find like a, you know, a citrus fragrance where citrus lasts throughout is, um, it's almost impossible. Oh you know, yeah, like, getting getting citrus in the base like it's just not going to happen. Right, there's orange sanguine from um, what's the the perfume? Oh, house? atelier, yeah. Right, but it's so weak and transparent and 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 so linear. Mm-hmm. And again, you're paying two hundred dollars for uh, I don't know how many. I think it, you can get the two hundred mil for about two twenty to twenty five or something. Right, but just to find a citrus fragrance with some depth and it, it's not. It's not something that you're going to see every day. I actually, that was one of my biggest disappointments, uh, kind of in my earlier niche days, like the kind of, you know, just the, the, the hype around orange sanguine, like this is like the most, uh, authentic orange citrus fragrance ever made. And I actually was going to buy a bottle blindly from Etiquette, which is an online perfume shop in Canada. I think they actually have a boutique, but you know, you can access it, you know, online. I was actually going to buy a bottle and have it shipped to my parents' house in Canada and then either have them ship it to me in Indonesia or, you know, just, you know, have my mom bring it over when she came to visit. I ended up not getting it just because I didn't want to spend $200 on a 200 mil bottle. Right. And I couldn't find anyone locally that was willing to take a big enough decant to make it worth my while. Mm -hmm. And I ended up smelling it, you know, I don't know, maybe five or six months later than that. I think I got a sample from someone and I was like, wow, that's it. It literally just smells like someone took some orange juice, watered it down and then squeezed it on my hand and then it's gone. And I was like, you know, it's just so too literal, too simple, too boring, too uninteresting for me. Well, there you go. And that's what blind buying is all about. And right now you probably wouldn't pay a hundred bucks for it, let alone two. Oh no, not even close. No, no. Um, Atelier though, I can get into the, I don't know. I'm not a fan of the house. I'm really, really, really not a fan of that house at all. Yeah, there's not much that can hold my attention from there, but um, I generally do like heavier scents. Mm-hmm. But you know, for the summer, it, it, they're they're kind of inappropriate. Yeah, so it would be nice just to find a nice citrus. But I'm not willing to, to wear Sauvage. Just <laughs> um, I don't know why I keep harping on Sauvage. I just do. I I just don't like it. Um, but I'm not willing to, you know, wear that or there's got to be something out there and, uh, it doesn't necessarily need to garner a compliment for me either. Yeah. Okay. So crowd pleasers, you know, kind of talking about generally like notes, fragrances that people tend to like or notes that people tend to like, um, Tell me about some crowd pleaser fragrances. What do you think? Other than obviously Sauvage. Sauvage is like such an oddity or rarity. Now we talked about this on your channel, uh, you know, in our Sauvage video. Um, it's raining like crazy rain here. So, you know, forgive me if you can hear that. But uh, yeah, we've kind of been on and off all night. Oh, it's wild here. Like I've never heard this kind of rain here in Canada before. It's nuts. But crowd pleasers, um, I think I'd have to say Adventus is a huge crowd pleaser. Everybody loves it. My wife loves it. She wears it. Uh huh. Um, I've actually had a small decant, a large decant, like 30 mil or 50 mil, and even a, a 120 mil full bottle of Aventus. And other than a few of my fragrance buddies in Jakarta, I literally never got a single compliment from it. Yeah. Um, but that's like a whole nother thing, you know, getting into, you know, uh, regions and compliments. So like in Asia, generally in Eastern Asia, uh, everyone's into citrus and fresh fragrances. Like over there, Aqua de Gio and Bulgari Aqua are like the number one and two selling fragrances. Like for men, like just buy a million, hundred billion centillion miles. Like <laughs> nothing can even touch it. If you just walk into a perfume counter, uh, they hand you Bulgari Aqua. 
You know, yeah. Um, it, it, it's all things that uh, neither you or I are into. Yeah. Most of the cloud, uh, crowd pleasers I find are generic drugstore fragrances like, yeah. um, you know, let's say um, from the pure line, Mugler, um, Pure Zest. Yeah, or Calvin Klein or Hugo Boss, yeah. um, Clinique Happy, you know, very yeah. simple, very, um, to me, very boring fragrances. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely, uh, again, you know, going back to Sauvage, it's just like this anomaly, like just how crazy people are going uh you know it's it's the best seller right now in the world i would say um everywhere everywhere talking to the sales associates but look at like the last three fragrances that have come out from the big three um designers guerlain mm -hmm. chanel and dior you have sauvage um chanel was blue de chanel edp yeah and guerlain was l'homme ideal yeah all kind of like the same genre the same ozonic um citrusy um style fragrances yeah i was kind of waiting for ozonic to come up because it's such a term that you know the average person into cologne you know perfume would you know male that just walks into the department store and says what's popular give me a hundred mil bottle like uh, ozone is such a strange term. Um, I just can't wait for the ozonic era to end. <laughs> it's kind of like the oud thing in the niche community. That's a good comparison. Okay. You know, like people are dying for the oud to go away. That's how I feel about the ozone. Um, it really gets on my nerves. As soon as I spray something and it's got that ozonic quality, for me, it's a complete write-off. Like, <laughs> there's no way it's coming home with me. How would you How would you describe ozonic for people that? Oh are man, ozonic! It's like you, the second you smell it, you know it's it's very fresh. It's very um airy. It's kind of watery. Yeah. Um, yeah, I those are exactly the words I like. Airy. I don't know how yeah, else to watery. describe it, but it's very, uh, it's a very, very generic. Smell. It's almost like a note, I would say, you know, because yeah, Sauvage has it. Um, it's just kind of like Mr. Berber generic, has it. A generic synthetic, you know. Lanuit has it. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's 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 like um, they, these fragrances. They all kind of smell the same, with just a little bit of a twist to them, you know. Mm -hmm. so i don't know yeah. yeah i agree um i the ozonic thing is interesting because it, it's something that i never really came up on my radar for better or for worse until you know like the last couple of years like you said where it's become the kind of the new oud for the designer world and you know everyone just loves this kind of like airy watery fresh clean kind of like clean smelling air it's you know, just standing everywhere out. yeah but uh yeah definitely i agree yeah the the ozonic thing it, it, yeah that's it if you want to if you want to get compliments and you want people to you know just love what you're wearing just spray on you know 20 sprays of sauvage and walk around the mall and i guarantee <laughs> you're gonna have people come up to you wow that's amazing yeah but you'll probably need more than 20 yeah <laughs> <laughs> I actually it lasts pretty it, it lasts quite a while but okay I, I, I don't know it's I just I can't take this stuff seriously mm -hmm. and I love it when people say like you know on Facebook or you know even on YouTube on your video and stuff you know we'll say how much we can't stand it and I <laughs> truly genuinely don't like it and be like oh you're jealous or you're just hating on it because it's popular and you like to like things that are aren't cool and I said, you know it's i just i don't like it. it's like going to a car freak you know, <laughs> someone that's totally into cars and just lives and breathes cars and well, saying your favorite car is like a 1998 ford escort and then yeah, or a toyota corolla yeah it's like just get out of my face like don't even talk to me you're such a retard like you can't even <laughs> Up with it. Yeah, I was actually called an idiot for not liking um, Aventus and Sauvage because they're the number one 
colognes in the world. Right. Well, it doesn't really make a difference to me if it's number one or number hundred. If I don't like it, I'm not going to wear it or buy it. For sure. For sure. It's as simple as that. Okay, I want to talk about something here. I've actually intentionally never mentioned this on my channel or at least very minimally. Um, a phrase or term that comes up very often in the compliment world, panty dropper. Oh, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> um, to me, I don't even know where to start with this. Like, first of all, the term just like embodies the kind of douchebaggy, um, date rapey, um, <laughs> frat boy. Yeah, exactly. Frat pop. boy, juvenile frat boy, yeah. trashy. Taller with a, you know, pure white fitted baseball cap backwards. Yeah. You know, just that's, that's exactly what I think of. A rich kid. Yeah, I, I don't, yeah, maybe. I see him just more as, just, yeah, just like the guy that when I go to, and I don't go to clubs. I haven't been to clubs in years. Like, on top of me hating club music or, you know, pop music or whatever, I just don't like the scene. When I go out to drink, I want to sit down with my buddies and just, you know, drink pints. That's it to me. Yeah. Um, but, well, I don't really do either of those. Yeah. So, um, well, we're, we're, we're a bit older, you know, than, you know, this kind of targeted market. Right. But when I hear the word panty dropper or, you know, compliment, I think you got to start somewhere before fragrance. Like, um, you know, brush your hair, take a shower, comb your hair, you know, wash your face, um, you know, your, your shoes, right? Get rid of the dad jeans, put on some fashionable clothes, you know, have some confidence. And yeah. then with that, compliments will start coming. Um, panty droppers, forget about that term. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I just don't like it. I hate it. I, and I've intentionally avoided it for years just because like, and you know, I, I don't want to sound like some, you know, neutered feminist or something, but it's just like, uh, it's know, got I, nothing to do about feminists. It's just, a, it's so disrespectful and yes, I don't know. And I, and as well, uh, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm bragging, but I've never needed a fragrance to, you know, get women to talk to me or something. And I'm quite a shy and, you know, kind of um, introverted person. But to me, when I go out, I think looks and attitude are so much more important than the way that you smell, like the way you carry yourself. Oh, have a nice smile, you know, um, hold the door open for somebody, have some courtesy and manners. Yeah. And, uh, It'll get you a lot further than having that panty dropper attitude, the douchebag yeah. um, attitude. Uh, yeah. It's just, yeah, to me, it's just the whole kind of, you know, the, the whole attitude and persona and kind of world around that. It's just guys who think that they can buy an expensive $90 drugstore cologne, wear it to the club, and then just, you know, bring home any girl. That and some want. girl's going to follow him home on a leash, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, like ripping her clothes off in the taxi on the way home. Because he smells a certain way. Yeah. <laughs> um, and if you're going to bring home a girl from the club that thinks you smell good, it's probably a bit more to do with that. Maybe that's why they're initially drawn to you. But well, I, you got to think if she's coming home with you. Yeah. How many other guys has she gone home with? And is that the type of girl you want to be bringing home? Well, there's that whole thing there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't even think of it in that aspect. But yeah, for sure. Like, you know. It, it's just so it, classless. If it's so easy to get a girl to come home with you because of their, your cologne. Yeah. You know, who, she, who else is she going home? You with? probably didn't even need cologne in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Right. She, yeah, so drunk, you know, she probably doesn't care, you know, I don't know. It's such a gray area, you know, talking about bringing drunk girls home from <laughs> stuff. 
Yeah. But uh, no, I totally agree. I, I don't know. I, to me, I do find it disrespectful. You know, I'm married. You're married as well. We're both family men. We both have children and stuff. Yeah. And to me, like, you know, just the kind of idea of me spraying on a, a fragrance and just, you know, walking into the club and, you know, picking up bitches. It's just yeah. like, I don't know. And you're going to be picking them out too, right? Whichever one you point at. Exactly. And it's also, it's just like, okay, if there's me standing, if there's me wearing, you know, Sauvage standing next to some dude that's like got a ripped six pack and just like, you know, really good looking and, you know, it's like. Can dance, you know, and yeah, that's some man. Like, oh, you smell good, but man, I bet you he's got, you know, I bet you he's packing some meat downstairs or something, <laughs> you know, or you know, she sees his BMW keys hanging out of his car. It's like, or yeah. out of his pocket for his car. It's like, yeah, I, I, just because a woman likes your uh, fragrance doesn't necessarily mean that, yeah, you know. No, but, you know, if you use the right way, it can boost your confidence. It can give you an extra step in your, you know, uh, a little kick and it, it, it can make you a little bit happier, you know, and maybe resulting in, in, in meeting a girl or. Oh yeah, for sure. Whatever, like, you know, in confidence. Oh, without a doubt, you know, cause there's, there's fragrances that when I wear, I'm actually, that make me in a good mood and, and, and I enjoy my day so much more. And, and quite oppositely, there's fragrances I wear and they make me angry and I'm angry for the entire day. So, <laughs> Yeah, like Interlude Man will do that to me all the time. It makes me angry. There's just so much energy in that fragrance that Hmm. it must be all that incense and frankincense. But every time I wear it, it it means serious business for me. Um, I'm actually like really angry. But uh, Wow, that's interesting. I've not even gone into that kind of facet with fragrance, you know, getting that. Everything carries energy around us, right? Even fragrances. Wow. Okay. Happy. Some make you upset. Some, you know, they all bring some kind of um, something to us. Well, yeah, the definitely like Narciso Rodriguez for him, um, which I love and adore. That's definitely something to me. It's it's kind of dreary and gray and somber, almost depressing. But I wouldn't say it really brings up like negative or you know fearful or hateful images but yeah definitely right but maybe something that you might want to wear on a rainy day yes yes like Terra de Hermes is something I like to wear on a rainy day and like you said it's very somber and relaxing and comforting and something you put on under a sweater a heavy um sports sweater or something yeah yeah you know it's great you know fragrances can bring out all kinds of um feelings and emotions for sure uh, and including confidence being one of them. Okay, so confidence another- and, and douchebaggery are, are two <laughs> different things. Very different. Yes, I agree totally. And you know, even when I was in high school, wearing like Hugo Boss and stuff, I was just never really that guy. Um, it was just not the way that I, you know, carried myself or the way that I wanted to be portrayed. And I had no problem, you know, meeting attractive girls. You know, I was you know, quite famous in high school for getting really hot girlfriends and stuff. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) But, but, you know, I'm just saying like, you know, I wasn't some macho douchebag, you know, trying to. Well, you don't portray yourself like that. We've gone out many times and. uh, Oh yeah. Yeah. That side of you. So. Um, But yeah, yeah, for sure. Like that's just, you know, the kind of the way it is. So Another thing I want to talk about, and this is another reason that, you know, I wanted you on for this topic is the only for me fragrance guy or girl versus the only for compliments guy or girl. And you know, what? I'm going to say guy because it's almost always guys that wear fragrances for just for compliments. Um, oh man, I can, I can honestly tell you that every morning when I go to apply on a fragrance, I never choose, like, it doesn't even enter my mind to put something on that I think will get me a compliment. Mm -hmm. I actually, like, make my choice in the morning when I'm in the shower. I'm like, how do I feel today? What do I want to wear? I want to wear something that I haven't worn in a while. I want to wear something that fits my mood. Um, 
yeah, compliments just never ever enter the picture for me because mm-hmm. I, I specifically wear fragrances that make me happy. Yeah. And I suit agree. my mood. Yeah. And you know, I think myself and yourself as well, you know, I'm not going to speak on behalf of you, but I, I, you know, we've talked about this before that, you know, to us, you know, people that are into this as, you know, far as we are, we want to use a fragrance to complement ourselves and we want to do it perfectly. And that's why guys like us or girls like us, <laughs> you know what I mean? Though? Right, that's right. Why we have, you know, 50, 75, 100 bottles. Because when we wake up, when we go to put something on, when we get out of the shower, when we get dressed, we want to grab a fragrance from our collection that complements exactly how we look, feel, you know, want to be portrayed that day. Right. And I'm going to replace your word compliment with challenge. Okay. I want to wear a fragrance that's going to challenge me for this day. And it's going to get me through a long work day. Yeah. It's going to take my mind off of work. Mm -hmm. Um, That so much more fulfills me than something that I think might compliment me, but will bore the shit out of me at the same time. Sure. Sure. Just kind of keeping you aware, kind of keeping you, you know, on your toes, like, wow, what is this? What's going on here? This is something I've never really smelled before. Right. Something that's constantly changing, um, something complex, you know, you know how it is. You, you, you enjoy the same. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. I, I don't necessarily have to say I need something overly complex or something that changes a lot. Like, you know, Serge Luton's uh, Comme de Garçon are like two of my favorite houses, but they're quite famous for being like really simple and fairly linear and stuff. But when I put on, you know, like we were just talking today about I was wearing Santal Majuscule and I find it to be a fairly linear fragrance, but there's just so much in it that I love. And it's just, you know, the depths of it, even though it is fairly linear. Wow. I don't get linear at all, man. Really? From yeah. Central Mad School? Yeah. I find it's one, it- actually the, one of the most beautiful fragrances I've ever worn. And the first mm-hmm. time I wore it, I was in absolute shock. Like I couldn't believe what I was smelling. Really? It just kept changing and changing on me. See, um, I don't find it to change that much. I get like, actually, um, and this is funny because again, we were just talking about this is to me, I get a lot of coffee and a lot of rose out of that. And it's just totally like it, it has a small, you know, fan base. In the- I, I can see what you're saying. And I wouldn't say it's coffee per se, but it, there's a bunch of notes in there that give it that coffee vibe. I, yeah, I, it's very yeah. earthy and, you know, kind of. It's yeah. Probably like the cacao mixed with cacao and sandalwood or something right giving you that coffee vibe it's yeah. actually um i get more coffee and rose from it than tom ford's cafe rose oh, which is yeah supposed to be coffee and rose yeah which doesn't have any coffee in it way more and i think i would know what it smells like because i drink like 20 <laughs> friggin' gallons of coffee a day and i can attest to that yes <laughs> right and yeah i just I don't pick up any ground coffee. I don't pick up any fresh coffee. Mm-hmm. I don't pick up any spilled coffee. Mm-hmm. I don't pick up like instant coffee. There's no coffee in it. I don't care yeah. what you say. There's yeah, no I coffee agree. in it. Oh. Yeah. Um, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> um, to me, a compliment is just kind of a positive byproduct, you know? So like when I wore Bois d'Orage to the bank, Right. I was wearing that for myself. And when I put that on, and it's not like I'm trying to be like some fragrance hipster that's like, ooh, I want everyone to think I smell weird and offensive and strange. No, not at all. Um, I wear something because I love it. And if someone else enjoys it, then that's awesome. So like when I, you know, said the 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 teller at the bank, she just went nuts over it. That like really made my day because it's like, you know, someone who's maybe kind of like an entry level fragrance enthusiast, like acknowledged that something that's very dry, 
woody kind of what I would describe as kind of like a masculine lumberjack fragrance. Right. Really loved it. And I, I, that I really liked that. Cause it just like, you know, okay. For all the people out there that go nuts over Sauvage, you know, male or female. Yeah. At least there are some just normal people out there that do appreciate that kind of stuff. Um, I actually wore Oon Rose from Frederick Mall to school the other day. I think it was literally just yesterday. And this oh. girl in my class just like was going crazy. She's like, who smells like a baby? And she kept going. She was literally walking around the class smelling people like, you know, one by one. And I kind of thought it was me. I'd never heard of Oon Rose described as smelling like a baby. What, do you, what did she mean by baby? I think just kind of like soft and delicate, floral, powdery kind of thing. Okay. That's, you know, I never really thought of it that way. I'm just like, wow, that's such a good description. Yeah, you know? neither did I. A really, you know, pampered, you know, very, you know, privileged little baby that's born into like, you know, old rich European blood or something that wears like, you know, expensive baby cologne it's like wow i really like that description and she's like you know probably doesn't know that much about fragrance so anyway she's going around like who is it who is it she finally gets to me and she's like oh wow i think it is you that's wearing it and she actually asked me for a hug and i was like well yeah sure. wow she gave me a hug and she's like oh my god you smell so good like she just couldn't get over it yeah and um it. but yeah that's you know to me what? But talking about Un Rose and compliments, like this is how little I actually care about compliments. Un Rose is, it's, as you know, it's, it's very special to me. Mm -hmm. um, it was my wedding day scent. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it's one of my wife's most despised fragrances that I own. Yeah. So, you know, as a selfish perfume nerd, <laughs> um, I, I always really wear something that, I find suiting. Yeah. And she finds it very outdated and <laughs> she uses the old lady term, which I really disagree with, but oh, totally. I totally disagree. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, I just absolutely love it and, and she cannot stand it, but you know, <laughs> it's, it's something that I chose to wear on our wedding day. And mm -hmm. you know, I, I didn't go with something that I knew she would love for mm -hmm. for the sake of getting a compliment or or to appease anybody else on that day. Right. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. I actually wore Bleu de Chanel the day that I got married. Well, there you go. Um, I was like, I still love it. I really, truly, genuinely still love it. But um, I know I like it too. And I, I don't get as much ozone from Bleu de Chanel as I do the others. And, uh, yeah, um, I get like kind of a, a powdery, fresh, clean, you know, slight citrus, uh, you know. Yeah, it's got that great grapefruit, some yeah. incense and patchouli. And I think from all the bottles that I own, Bleu de Chanel is probably um, the one I've used the most. Really? Especially very early on in my journey. Bleu de Chanel is actually what got me into this journey. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I was just walking through the bay and, and you know, the sales associate sprayed me with, I think it was Blue de Chanel, um, Versace Pour Homme, and it was one other fragrance I can't even remember. Mm -hmm. And Blue de Chanel turned me off so much. Like, really? Yeah, I just kept smelling my wrist all day. I took the day off of work. I was just <laughs> screwing around with my wife and I just kept smelling my wrist. I was like, what the hell do I smell like what is this I couldn't make like anything out I didn't know anything about you know the use of um notes or mm -hmm. chords or anything so I just googled Blue de Chanel and that led me to Fragrantica to bass notes and I was like what the hell is this, this is like a whole new world so wow that's, that's how I fell into the rabbit hole wow and I haven't dug my way out since that's pretty cool yeah all right, now, one more thing I want to talk about. Something that, again, exactly why I wanted you on. I wanted to talk about the myth of compliments. And by that, I mean people who, you know, publicly, people who perhaps, you know, we can't prove it, but that perhaps uh, fabricate, exaggerate, 
you know, just kind of go overboard on the compliments factor. Yeah. Uh, and like oh, we mentioned a little bit before, I've been in Canada for like 14 months now, you know, since I moved home. And I've gotten maybe five or six compliments and like one of them is from my mom one of them was from like an old friend of mine from high school so like unsolicited compliments you know i've gotten like three or four in 14 months and there's youtube reviewers that'll you know do top 10 most complimented fragrances and they'll update it like every single year and it's like just by calculating their numbers and statistics. Yeah, they just like, add up to hundreds of compliments. Yeah, it's like I, I can't even fathom that. So what do you think about this? Top, I, top 10 or top 20 compliment getters. Like I'll be lucky if I get 12 compliments a year. Yeah. Now, only. when I hear somebody get 15 or 20 or 30 compliments in one night, I'm just, yeah. wow, really? Well, see, that's, that kind of brings up, what do you hang out with 12 year old girls? Like, where do you go? You know, I wear fragrance every single day too. wherever I'm, you know, I'm always around somebody, but. And yeah, are you getting these compliments from your mom or your sister or your brother? Are they solicited? Yeah. Are you going up to people saying, do I smell good? Or are you? wearing something in a club where 99% of the guys are wearing Le Mal and you're wearing Sauvage and that everyone's like, Oh wow, you smell really good. Um, And I'm sure there are people who work in offices who work closely with people that do have, you know, their kind of cubicle partner or, you know, someone across the, you know, the hall from just go like, wow, you smell really good. Yeah. But Chris fragrance can only do so much. Like Mm -hmm. it can only project so far, right? How many people can you get in an office uh, setting? Yeah. Right. You're not going to hit a hundred people with your fragrance. Oh, and just like the idea of, you know, complaining uh it was funny like when i first came back to canada and i was going into like one of the government offices to like get some of my uh cards and you know uh documents updated and it's just like in big bold letters it's like no fragrance or perfume beyond the point. <laughs> and it's like wow and it's like i see it so often here now um you know so many offices are fragrance free you're not even allowed to like wear body wash and stuff damn i would die if my workplace told me no fragrance i don't oh. know what i would do with <laughs> another job like I, um, I wouldn't be able to cope yeah i i thought about that too like you know it's just so weird like just like the weird but it's perfectly acceptable to go into these places smelling of dirty stale cigarette butts or you know marijuana smoke yeah or, or armpit beer. but if you go in smelling like a $300 fragrance no go you're not allowed get the hell out yeah well i guess it's people having allergies or whatever headaches yeah do you have anything that you've consistently been um you know uh anti-complimented on you know other than uh smelling like farts with uh, well yeah i I was i got another anti-compliment with songe like when i wear songe i i I can't help but i just compliment myself going (laughs) not even me like eugene you smell good i'm like songe you smell fucking amazing i i just can't get over it okay I was in the office at work the other day wearing songe and this guy comes over and he's like, are you wearing cheap cologne from eBay? <laughs> and I was like, what? I didn't even know how to respond to him. I didn't even know what that means. Like, what do I say? And then he asked me like, what are you wearing? And how do you tell a guy that doesn't even wear deodorant that you're wearing um, songe d'un bois de thé without feeling like a douche? So I just sort of stood there like blank face and walked away, you know? Yeah, yeah. And not even to mention that it's like $300 for a bottle. Right. He could. He probably wouldn't even be able to comprehend. So That's more than he spends awkward. on grooming in a year, obviously. I, I, I get that quite often. Like, what are you wearing? And then, you know, you just sound so pretentious. Like, yeah. 
spelling out this huge long French perfume name. Yeah, that yeah. They have absolutely no concept of what it possibly is. I think the only like blatant um uh you know anti compliment I've ever gotten um I was in I think it was grade 10 I was teaching my grade 10 students and uh I was wearing Edition Blanche Chanel's Edition Blanche No way yeah and I was like walking around the class I don't remember if I was like checking their work or helping them with something or you know whatever but I was just like walking around and as I passed by one of the girls in my class, um, she like made this face and a bunch of people started laughing <laughs> and I kind of was like, what's wrong? What is it? She's like, Oh, your, your, your perfume is so bad, sir. And I was like, really? <laughs> I was like, this additional wow. Blanche is like one of the <laughs> easiest, you know, just, you know, likable fragrances I could think of. But yeah, she, she hated it. That's so odd, but interestingly enough, my wife can't stand Edition Blanche, which really? I find just so simple and and actually a crowd pleaser, I would say. Yeah, yeah, because it is. It's sweet and it's creamy sweet. lemons and leather and vanilla and ambers, and mm -hmm. I think it's a stunning fragrance. Um, I'm not as big on it as I used to be, but yeah, I think you know, to me, it is like just like the definition of like a high end, a likable high end designer fragrance. Right, right. Like totally, without a doubt, it's by far my favorite from the Allure line. Oh yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, the Allure line's pretty awful to me. Yeah, it, it they they truly are. Um, yeah, there's some pretty awful fragrances in that line, but yeah, no, uh, Edition Blanche is good. I like it. Um, I sold my bottle a long, 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 long time. It's ago. actually the only one I've kept from all the allures. I've sold everything but that one and yeah. it's one that I'll hang on to. I actually owned the original allure twice. This is funny. I actually bought the original allure and I thought it was fake and I actually returned it to the guy that I bought it from, like some online seller. Wow. It turned out it wasn't fake. It just smells like shit. <laughs> um, Cause it's like, it's so plasticky. It smells like waxy plastic. And yeah. It's, it's uh, just like sweet woods. Oh, it's so bad. But yeah. Yeah. That's how I feel about the, um, the sport. Oh, I loved it. It was one of my first Chanel's and now I, I can't even look at it. I had to sell my bottle. I was, um, yeah, I bought it years ago based on a lot of the hype. I remember the first time smelling it, I was like, wow, this is really nice. And then that kind of like vanilla dry down comes in. It's like, oh, vanilla and citrus, like, uh, I don't know. I just couldn't do it. I ended up again, yeah, I sold my bottle. I couldn't couldn't take it. Definitely, again, I prefer the uh, Edition Blanche to that for sure. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. All right. So any other thoughts to throw in here? Um, as far as compliments go, just really, I'd say wear what makes you happy. Yeah. And, um, the compliments will come. Cause I agree. in, you know, fragrances are all made to smell good. They mm -hmm. all smell different, but their sole purpose is to smell good. Right. Yeah. yeah. Some are stronger. Some are, um, you know, they're more masculine or more feminine, but generally wear what makes you happy, make, well, wear what makes you comfortable and, mm -hmm. and, and the compliments will come. Yeah. And I, I don't think, especially for newcomers, you know, don't break the bank. Don't waste your money on high end niche because everyone says it'll get you, you know, girls, it'll get you, you know, girls drop their panties, you know, don't spend $300 on a bottle of Ventus or a bottle of tobacco vanille or whatever. Um, you know, I actually find it quite opposite for compliments. You would stick to a designer fragrance. Um, niche aren't really about compliments. They're more about art of perfumery and just I agree. more for yourself than for those around you. I think those are like the two of the more that I hear mentioned in uh niche circles you know just like aventus like oh aventus is like a panty melter you know you can't <laughs> wear it without getting girls throwing their panties at you and stuff and you know it's just like 
definitely one of those things and it's so inflated in price i just i don't know i think you know think about the art and you know i i say that but you know there's so many newcomers and you know younger guys that are getting into it that want to be you know noticed for what they spend they want to spend money but they right it's a trophy perfume really is what yeah and i can't blame them um you know when you're spending a hundred dollars on a bottle of cologne and you're you know 20 years old that's a lot of money and you kind of want to expect some return from it right especially when you get into this uh, hobby it's like one is never enough like before you even brought that one home you're already thinking about the next one yeah for sure Yeah. So I, I just say, you know, be true to yourself. Don't worry about what other people like, you know, if you can wear something and, you know, hold kind of a, a positive, you know, outgoing attitude, you're just as likely to get compliments from random girls. If that's what you're looking for as a young male, then, you know, if you just spray on Windex or WD-40, you know what I mean? Right. You can wear a nice suit and drive a nice car and spray fart spray on yourself and you can probably get girls to come home with you. And be and it'd be much more interesting than <laughs> well, something ozonic. I don't even want to get into that thing. <laughs> but um yeah, for sure. Well, thanks so much for joining me, Eugene. Um it's been a you know, a pleasure. Had a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully no one's too offended, but you know, just uh, certainly everything we do or say is lighthearted. We don't, we're, we're honest, but we don't mean honest. it too hateful. But I want to thank you for having me on. And, uh, I was quite nervous actually coming on after, you know, the great job you and Manny did last week. Um, I, I, it, it's tough to follow up, uh, on your first podcast. So congratulations to both of you guys on that. And, uh, I look forward to seeing um, many more. Yeah, well, thanks so much. And, you know, is you know, you're a great, uh, you know, guest to have on for the second episode. And, of course, uh, I'd love to have you on uh, for a further episode down, down the line somewhere. For sure. But, um, yeah, thanks so much for, wa- uh, for coming on. And uh, thanks to everyone for listening. And I'll be sure to link up your channel. Definitely check out his channel. Like I said, my fragrance partner in crime, without a doubt. All right, man. I appreciate it. And we'll see you soon. Okay. Take care and take care to everyone else out there. And, uh, you know, tune in soon for episode three. Take care.